Hey hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to do a the latest video in our How to Play series. But I wanted to do it specifically today because I'm going to be using this army in an upcoming battle report. It might be next week, it might be the week after, it depends on how it goes. It'll probably be the week after because I've got a, uh, a plan for next week's video. But let's see how that one pans out. Now you will have seen from the title of the video that today we are talking about Bavarians. I don't think there's been a better time to talk about them with the recent release of the Victrix Plastic Bavarians. And while the battle we're doing is going to be set in 1809, the, uh, the rules that we're going to use are given in Clash of Eagles, and they are for when the Confederation of the Rhine, they're part of that list, when the Confederation of the Rhine joined Napoleon in his invasion of Russia. There's not a huge amount of difference here. The main difference would be probably the Saxons. They had a massive reorganisation in 1810. But the Bavarians, they're, they're pretty much of a muchness. They've got slightly different uniforms and they're more on the French model. But uh, it's close enough for gameplay purposes. Now the Confederation of the Rhine list is in Clash of Eagles, as I said. And it starts on 172, on page 172. And it's a little bit of a weird one, the Confederation of the Rhine Army list. And it's not surprising, it's trying to put together a number of different minor nations in one list. And it says that uh, you've got to have one to two, one to three, one to whatever, of all the different nations. I think what it's supposed to be is, if you are doing, say, a, a Württemberg Infantry Brigade, or, a, sorry, a Württemberg Army Division, then you would use that, if you're doing a Bavarian one, or a Westphalian one, or whatever. So... We're going, to, we're going to assume that that's what the author meant, and that you don't have to have one brigade from each nation in your first thousand points. That's what we're going to assume anyway. Although, I'm uh, again, looking at the uh, the battle report, I may end up having some special guest stars, but we'll get to that later. So the army lists are on page 173, but page 64 is where the rules are. So that's where we're going to start. The next video I'm going to look at is selecting the army itself, and then we'll do the battle report. That's the plan anyway. Let's go into it. So we're going to look at their rules today. And as, as with all things Napoleonic, we'll start with the Lion Infantry, the queen of the battlefield. Now they have a... Uh, they have quite different from the French, in so much as the stats are all the same, but it's the special rules that make them different. So they're hand-to-hand -hand six, shooting three, morale four plus, stamina three, but they have rifle mixed formation and they are lacking initiative. Now that's a little surprising to me that they've got the rifles, because it was my understanding that only half of the light company of the light infantry battalions had rifles. So, not 100% sure about that. I'll have to double-check that before we play the game. But the, the lacking initiative is the key thing here, as well as one of the rules that they don't have, and we'll talk about that in a second. So, the lacking initiative means that they need to be ordered if they're within 12 inches of the enemy, unless it's to change formation or to charge the nearest enemy. Now, normally, you know me, if you've uh, listened to this channel for a long time, stay in attack column and charge the enemy. That's that's how I roll. That's how I carry my eagles to glory or more often get absolutely massacred. But you'll see that the Bavarians don't have the pas de charge special rule so they don't get the extra plus one to their command they can still form attack column they're not like the british so the british ha so in black powder it's assumed that you can form attack column if you're an infantry unit unless you've got a special rule that says you can't so the british have a special rule that says may not form attack column or something like that so you can form attack column and it's not a necessarily a bad choice to do it but you're not going to get the additional plus one that the French get. So don't expect those lightning assaults that the French can do. And also, because you don't have that initiative move, it means that it it means that you don't want to necessarily get in the enemy's face as quickly. With the French, you want to smash your way up there, and you want to try and get as close as you can, and then you can worry about the initiative moves, or perhaps ordering your troops when the, the, when the, the battle starts to break down. With the Bavarians, you don't necessarily want to do that. The other thing with forming attack column is you're not getting the most out of your mixed rifle formation. So if I'm, I'm going to proceed on the basis of this video that the line units do have that special rule, I may end up sort of removing that for myself for my own games. But 
With the mixed rifle formation, you can outrange your enemy. Now, I know that I'm going to be fighting the Austrians. The Austrians have obviously got their Jaegers, excellent rifle armed light troops. So maybe not so much in this case. If I was fighting against the Russians, then I'd, it'd probably go a lot better. Although the Austrians have got Jaegers as well, but they're not, not particularly good. So you can either use the Bavarians as more of a shooting army, or you can use them in the traditional French mold, a more of an aggressive assault based army. That's looking at the infantry. And the light infantry are basically the same as French light infantry. They've got sharpshooters, they've got skirmish. These guys also have mixed rifle formation, so they're a little bit better than the French in that regard. Again, they don't have the pas de charge. It's quite fitting by 1812 that the French light infantry are basically just line infantry. That's how they were employed. The, the, the days of sort of swarms of skirmishes and things like that. It did happen in 1812. Borodino, there was quite a lot of skirmishes there in those huge battles. But such as it had been at, say, uh, Marengo or Austerlitz, those days had gone and the attack column was by far the more popular formation for French troops by that time. And that's due to the deterioration of quality of troops and training more than anything else. Speaking of things that outrange their opponents, they also have access to very heavy artillery, or position artillery as it's called here. We're not quite in Ottoman territory here, but we're definitely approaching Russian territory. So they can also outrange their enemies with theirs. So that makes me think that the Bavarians will work best as quite a defensive force. So you can use your longer range artillery and your longer range rifles to force the enemy to come to you. Now this can be particularly useful on armies with lower strategy rating so if you're fighting the austrians or the russians then making those then make those moves and making them fail their command roles isolating some units could be an excellent way of being able to break the army down we'll look in uh, in detail in a second about another way that you can stop those armies mm, to limited to limited degrees of success we'll say but the key here so the key takeaway from the infantry is They've got that lacking initiative, and they don't have the pas de charge. So they're, they're quite flexible in that because the French get such a bonus for their pas de charge, they're almost shoehorned into that formation. With the Bavarians, there's actually a, an argument to say that they should be in line with their skirmish companies deployed, and they should be firing at the enemy. It's only one shot with a rifle, but uh, it's better than no shots, and it obviously gives them obscured target if the enemy is firing back as well. Certainly, if you're fighting Austrians, and I've talked about this uh, before, their special rule that gives them plus uh, plus an extra shooting dice when they're firing at point-blank range, so when you're charging them, basically, means that anything you can do to not charge Austrians is to be recommended. So, uh, yes, I expect that I will probably advance, form line, and then I'll duke it out with the Austrians. Now, General Dan, who will probably be watching this video will know that that's my plan, so he'll probably come on at me a lot quicker. All I've got to hope is that he fails some of his command rolls. He'll only be strategy rating 7, possibly 8, and I'll just hope that he fails some of his rolls and that we uh, that we can isolate his units and maybe attack them from two or three directions at once. The other thing that the uh, mixed rifle formation means for the Bavarians is they are excellent at defending strong points. Because you only get one shot from each side of a building anyway, then you may as well have that being the best shot it can be. So stick some riflemen in there. The French obviously don't have any access to rifles, so having these Bavarians in there really gives them some... Uh, so it unlocks that long-range firepower that the French sometimes lack. And with the French being far better at being aggressive and attacking, if you need to hold a location, for example, say you're fighting through a village and you want some troops to hold it, then Bavarians, absolutely brilliant for that job. It also means that their lacking initiative rule doesn't really mean anything because they're not going anywhere. They're not leaving the buildings. So now we're going to move on to their cavalry. They have Chevalier. They are effectively uh, the same as Chasseurs or uh, or Hussars, Light Dragoons, that kind of thing. I mean, Chevalier are Light Dragoons. They've got exactly the same stats as your French or your British ones. They've got um, Hand to Hand 6. They've got... I think they might have Shooting 3, actually. Let me just double check. Yeah, they've got Shooting 3, which I, I assume is a typo. They've also got Morale 4+, plus, uh, Stamina 3, and they've got the Marauder Special Rule. Again, I'm assuming, and I will be assuming during the game, that they don't really have Shooting uh, 3, that that's in fact a typo. 
Although that said, in the um, the summary in the army list, I've also got shooting three in there as well. So maybe some clarification is needed on that one, but I'm going to go forward assuming that they don't actually have shoot three plus. Uh, sorry, they don't have three dice when they're shooting. I must confess, though, I've not got any Bavarian Chevalier paint up yet. I was trying to do them this weekend, but uh, unfortunately I, uh, I didn't get time. So they may end up being replaced by some French Hussars, but uh, it's a shame because I've actually got the uh, Bavarian Chevalier models from front rank and they are gorgeous i'm really really looking forward to painting those up so that's it for the units there's not a huge variety in the bavarian army which is a bit of a shame because they're they're quite funky they're really really nice models actually but um yeah so that's it for their unit choices but we're going to flick forward to the army list on page 173 and we're going to have a look at the options they can take because the bavarians were one of the the more shall we say, active participants in the Napoleonic Wars. Certainly one of the more active members of the Confederation of the Rhine, and a lot more skilled than, say, the Westphalians were. So in fitting with this, we can see that... Uh, so I've turned to page 173 now, and we can see that the Bavarians have got quite a lot of options on their units. So the first one is they can upgrade two battalions in the army to large, and they can also give up to half of them veteran status, so that's reliable Elite 5+. I would actually, I normally shy away from the upgrades, but uh, with that one, I think if you're playing a points battle, as we will be, that's one that I would definitely look at. The uh, Elite 5 Plus is quite a strong rule. I would be tempted to probably stack those, so I'd have the two large battalions as veterans. Now, you know, I'm not sure how realistic that is in history, because obviously, you know, the more veteran you are, the more action you've seen, the more casualties you've taken. But, you know, and it also adds quite a lot of points to that battalion as well. But because it's for the battalion, not the size of the battalion, then you're definitely getting the most out of it by putting it on the large ones. You can also add a cavalry regiment to the brigade. Now, you have the option of making it either a veteran or a small one. I actually wouldn't be too disinclined to make it a small one. That'll pay for the points of making one of your battalions a veteran. And you could still force the enemy into square. And that's what I was going to talk about when I said, oh, we'll come back to some tactics later, is the uh, obviously the Austrians are a little bit more difficult because they've got the battalion mass. But if you're fighting, say, the Russians, and you can force their infantry into square, then once again it gives your Bavarians that opportunity to use their longer-range firepower when the, the Russians, in this case, would be out of range. And you can plink off one shot a turn, but it just makes sure that that square can't move and you can fire at it with no danger of being fired at yourself. That, of course, can lead you to bring up your artillery, and then you know, then it's all to play for once the artillery is firing at that square as well. And that's it, really. I just wanted to do a quick video today. I just wanted to go over some brief sort of general tactics for the Bavarians. As you've seen, they don't have any heavy cavalry. They've only got light cavalry, Chevalier. So they're very unlikely to win a protracted cavalry battle, especially against, well, especially against Austrians with those huge Krasier units that they've got. So they're going to have to be quite wily against those. A experienced enemy commander is going to use their cavalry advantage to try and stop the Bavarians from being able to maneuver as they would want. So your Chevalier really are just there to try and stop the enemy cavalry from menacing your infantry too much. But I'm going to go more into specific tactics of my army when we look at the army in next week's video. And we're going to be doing a points game. It's going to be 600 points. I'm going to go into why in the next video. But uh, it, it, you know, basically, it's just because we want to try something different. And we don't necessarily, neither myself or Dan, have collected our respective armies to any particular order of battle. So I thought it would be a good uh, chance to see the points values in action. But thank you very much for listening. And I shall see you guys next time.